2019-01, Steve Vermilio. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Moving right along, as you see, we've been skipping the pictures and the other requests. But when we get to this one, we're going to look at some pictures because it makes a nice little walking tour in the virtual world. Uh, this is a rezoning, not a conditional use by Steve Dermello. Uh, on behalf of United Way, this is the property on North Patterson Street, um, directly off the northeast corner of the BSU main campus. Um, some of you remember this is the Sessions residence, it's right here at Gordon Avenue, he's in North Patterson. Um, it's been on the market for a while. Um, United Way is in the process of purchasing the property and they're wanting to convert the residence to their administrative office. Um, the offices are not allowed east and are 10 anymore, so it triggers the need for rezoning. So they're requesting OP zoning on 0.73 acres, an activity center, the comprehensive plan is an institutional activity center that corresponds with the BSU campus and the areas around that. And then the aerial map you see is from 11 years ago. You see the urban forest. Uh, this is in the local historic district of the city. Uh, it's also in the Berkeley North National Register District. There's a bunch of areas around it. Um, going into the pictures, uh, actually, we have a survey from a number of years ago which shows the existing house. Um, there's a proposed parking lot to be placed in the center of the property. Um, the applicant's not proposing any changes other than some remodeling inside. Um, the removal of a dilapidated storage building in the center of the yard and a small parking lot. Um, the back, you see a single story frame the building that is Mr. Sessions' <coughs> uh, mother in law suite, which has been vacant for some time. And the applicant is proposing to use that for storage and perhaps a small training room that become part of the facility. Um, site plan cleaned up looks like this. Um, they will have to install 10 parking spaces. Um, I'm awaiting a revision to this, but the way they will get to 10 is that residence in the back has a carport and a wide driveway, and that accommodates two or three parking spaces there. So that gets them over the minimum of 10. Um, this is purely conceptual. We will still need to go through plan review for these changes, as well as approval <coughs> of this park preservation. Now onto the picture. Subject property, this is how it looks from Patterson Street. Um, as you see, there's really no room in the front yard to do anything else, and they are not proposing any changes there. Next picture, this is the shared driveway apron with the property to the north. Theirs is the driveway on the right side. Um, that's fairly narrow. It's only able to accommodate one-way traffic, and that is what they are proposing, is that you will enter off of Patterson, go along the north side of the building, and then once you reach back in the back. Um, this is the view on the side. Next slide. This is the back of the residence. Um, one of the changes they will need to make back here is install an ADA ramp for accessibility into the building, and that will be part of the HBC review. Um, to the left of this picture is the dilapidated building that is in the way of the proposed parking lot. It is in not very good condition, so that is proposed to be removed. And then the back side of that building, you can see its condition is not as good as the rest of the property. And then to the left of this is the mother-in-law suite, which is new construction. But you see there the pickup truck, that is the driveway that leads to the carport. I think there's another picture of this building to get a little better view of it. Um, the whole property is densely landscaped. <laughs> it's almost impossible to see any of this from anywhere except in the middle of the property. Immediately behind this is an alley. This is where the traffic will exit um, southbound down to, I think, Moore Street, um, no, College Street. Um, and then the next picture after this is if you turn around, there's a small vacant area that is technically to turn around for the alley. But if they were needing some additional parking spaces, here's your overflow area at the north end of the alley. Other adjacent properties, Include streetscapes. This is looking south along Patterson in front of the BSU campus. The next one is a, another residence that was converted to an office many years ago. This is at the other corner on Fourth Avenue. And then the next picture is the view looking north of Patterson. And if you refer back to the zoning map, you see there's already a lot of OP and RP zoning along that part of the corridor. Um, with the HPC uh, sort of have a purview over the future of the building and how it will appear and or how change of use might impact the area or not. Um, staff is very comfortable with the 
change the zoning to OB um, to fit the zoning pattern and then simply convert the residents over to office usage. Um, so with that, we found it consistent with the comments plan and we recommend <coughs> approval of the two. With no conditions? No conditions. This is straight up zoning change. Okay. Yes. I'm just curious, did you get any clarity from last week's work session on the alley? I did. Um, I got clarity and then re-clarity as of this afternoon. Um, that alley does exist. The tax map is in error. The northern tip of the alley where it goes through to Moore Street was vacated and closed by the city many years ago. But that is the only portion that was closed. And I think the tax office inadvertently erase the whole out. But it is there, and the surveyor is correct. And it is city property. It is a city public alley paved 20 feet wide in use. And the fire department has no partner over either one? They said they will protect the property from either the alley or the street, and their hose will reach. Okay. Any other questions for staff? Okay. Thank you. If not, I will ask if there's anyone here tonight who wishes to speak on behalf of this request. Please come forward, please. Any people will start to state your name and address. My name is Steve Formia. I'm the executive director of the Greater Law Austin Highway. Our address is 210 West Park Avenue. And on behalf of the board and staff, I'd like to thank y'all for allowing us to come uh, speak with y'all tonight. I know uh, all of y'all have seen and reviewed these plans. Uh, I know all of y'all have seen and reviewed these plans, and I'm here to ask, answer any questions that you may have. Any questions? You, uh, United Way is in process of purchasing this property, is that correct? Okay. Do you have any questions for the presenter? All right. No. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else here tonight who wishes to speak on behalf of this request? Okay, go right ahead. I'm just curious to say, if this whole acquisition goes to offer professional, can, can the dwelling in the back be a residential lease? Um, it can only if the office goes away. Um, that is something that adjacent property owner had asked. Um, the mother-in-law suite has been vacant for some time. Um, with the change of regulations, it became a non-performing use um, in that non-performity has gone away. But as an office occupying the primary building, it is not eligible to be an accessory dwelling. Um, but if the front building were to revert back to a primary dwelling again, then that can become a mother law suite again without having to go through a public hearing. Could it be rented as professional? It could not. They cannot cohabitate. <clears throat> it's got to be the primary use. Um, now, I see where you're going. It can be its own office. That is correct because the office usage would still be the same, as long as the front building is office. office. But in order for the accessory dwelling to become residential again, the primary building would have to go back to being the primary residence. I'm just trying to get the best use out of land. Yeah. And there, there are some rules I mean, that were in place now that were not years ago when the Sessions has got that approved, uh, I think 18 years ago. Um, the supplemental standards require that the owner of the property reside in the primary dwelling. Um, so if that scenario were to unfold, they would need to comply with those standards. Okay. All right. Is there anyone tonight here who wishes to speak against the request? Anyone wishing to speak against the request? All right. If not, commissioners, any other questions before I entertain a vote? All right, if not, I'll ask for a vote. Madam Chair, regarding DA 2019-01, I make a motion that we recommend approval to the City Council of Valdosta. First staff's recommendation. All right, I have a motion. Second. Second. Okay. Are there any other questions before we vote? If not, uh, I'll take a vote, please, on um, DA 2019-01. Uh, motion made by Chairman Hightower. All those in favor? Raise your right hand, please. All those against? And it is unanimous. Thank you. 
All right, we're moving right along. Thank you, Mr. Martin.